have nailed it. Is there highly energetic, high tech? There's something. It's not just a smoking gun, as we've talked about before. It's a loaded gun. I mean, this stuff goes off. Uh, where many folks, including myself, observed the uh, collapses, the so-called collapses of the World Trade Center towers in Building 7. And we thought, you know, something is rotten in the state of Denmark here. And just common sense kind of told us that th these buildings could not have come down as a result of, of the plane impacts and fires. And many early researchers like Jim Hoffman had uh, done valuable information out there but as we went out and talked to people uh, in our activism, one of the things that we were really lacking was really a, a scientific validation of our hypothesis. Um, you know, we had uh, observed through the video evidence uh, these uh, so-called collapses, and we weren't buying it, but we didn't have uh, scientific, hard scientific proof that would, would uh, back up our hypothesis. And that is until late 2006 when Dr. Stephen E. Jones came out with his paper, why indeed did the World Trade Center buildings completely collapse? And finally, uh, we as a movement had somebody on board who was taking a scientific look at what happened there at uh, the World Trade Center on September 11th. And uh, he has been involved in a new paper, Active Thermitic Material Discovered in Dust from the 9-11 World Trade Center Catastrophe. And again, this paper has been submitted for peer review at a major scientific journal. So to get the vigorous reaction, you make the aluminum and the iron oxide smaller and smaller and smaller. And as you get smaller, the reaction goes faster and faster and faster. So now, so, so you know, sometimes I hear, well, there's aluminum in the buildings, you know, sheets of aluminum, and then you've got iron oxide, that's just rust, which is true, it is rust, on the steel columns. And maybe those two got together and you have this enormous... Uh, explosion or reaction, you know, and no, no, you can get a spark out of that. That's all. <laughs> you have to have finely powdered uh, iron oxide and aluminum. Finely, now, is there finely powdered aluminum in the buildings just sitting there? I mean, you wouldn't think so. However, in these red-gray chips, in the red material, there is this fine aluminum. So there's already a red flag in this red material. What is this doing here, you know, and mixed? We say intimately mixed. Uh, you'll find that in the literature on nanothermite, where they've taken ultrafine grain, now uh, aluminum and iron oxide powder. You mix those together, and now, because of the very, is less than 100 nanometers, is 120, 100 nanometers, they draw the line. They say, okay, below that, we're now dealing with nanothermite. Now it gets hard to acquire those materials. Very expensive to buy nano-aluminum, for instance. But now if you mix them, now it will go off, if you do it right, um, explosively. And that term is used in the literature on uh, this nanothermite, also called superthermite. And then, and then as you read, uh, it was done at national labs, uh, Livermore and Los Alamos, for example. Some universities also pulled up on it. Uh, picked up on this uh, line of research on the nanothermite, and it goes back into the 1990s. And the reason it's so interesting is because the stuff is uh, super thermite. It's so energetic, and you can tailor it to different purposes. I mean, you can make it burn faster or slower. You can add an organic. That's typically done to, so that there's a gas release, and uh, then you know, it becomes an explosive when you have this... Uh, gas release, there's always a flash when you, when you successfully ignite this uh, uh, super thermite. Well, uh, I, I don't see how you could avoid it. Whenever we've ignited these red chips and looked at it, we see this flash of light, bright flash of light, and there's also a, 
a gas released clearly. Um, so it has all these properties of super thermite, and that's in the discussion section of the paper. I mean, if I were recommending uh, reading of the paper, you know, so that you don't get too discouraged by the scientific details, <laughs> I would read through the introduction, tell us how we got the dust, and show the map of the Manhattan area where the dust samples were collected. And then it goes into figures two, three, four. You've got those nice color photographs. And figure four is a, a photograph through with the electron microscope, and the red and gray layers are labeled. Obviously, the electron microscope doesn't show color, you know, because that is an optical phenomenon. But it, they're labeled, and you can see the materials are quite interesting, as you, at least to me, as, <laughs> as you go and we go to higher and higher magnifications as you go along in the paper. So you'd read the introduction, you'd look at the pictures as we go to higher and higher magnifications, and then I'd recommend going to the discussion section where we discuss what we learned and what this uh, material, uh, you know, how it reacts, and, and we compare with superthermite, quoting from the literature on superthermite which takes us into uh, well, largely these national labs are working on it because it has military applications. And they'll tell you, you know, we're not, uh, as you read the literature from these labs, they'll say, well, we're, we can't disclose, we're not going to disclose all the military applications of this stuff. But here's what we will disclose, and then they talk about this material. These pri primarily are uh, iron oxygen, um, aluminum, carbon, of course, silicon, which is interesting. I don't know quite why the silicon is there, but it seems to provide a matrix, and you find that in the sol gel chemistry discussed in the literature, these uh, military uh, labs that work with this uh, sol gel formulation of superthermite. And, and quite often potassium, which is a, a fairly... Uh, common ingredient in pyrotechnics as well. So, you know, those are the principal elements. But now let me let me follow up one other thing. Um, you know, we're hoping that with your efforts and, you know, 9-11 Truth, Scholars of Truth and Justice, 9-11, and these uh, architects and engineers, great job for 9-11 Truth, that we can get a groundswell now of uh, interest with this new series of discoveries and with other scientists confirming them that we can get a push now, and hopefully with the new uh, President Obama administration, you know, he's welcoming science. He says we're not going to suppress science anymore, which is an admission that Bush Cheney did. We all knew that anyway, but, you know, they said we're not going to suppress uh, science. So let's hope that that is true and that we can get this groundswell and just find out who made this stuff in these quantities, tons of this uh, red material. Who's capable of making super thermite? Uh, we do have some ideas on that, of course, but this should lead very rapidly to an investigation then of who, who actually made this material and why, you know, it's <laughs> kind of obvious why in some sense, but, you know, let's get to the bottom of this and get some justice quickly, and we hope that this paper will be a start for a new push for this type of, uh, I'd have to call it a forensic investigation that we're involved with now. Well, very powerful evidence which would suggest that the towers were brought down through the use of high-tech explosives, namely nanothermite. Dr. Jones and his colleagues have actually found unexploded thermite nanothermite, I should say, in the World Trade Center dust. This is literally and figuratively explosive evidence that should be all over the mainstream. Now, it's up to you, every one of you out there listening, to take this information, arm yourself with it, and uh, disseminate it out to everyone you know. It's such important information, such damning information, if you are a believer in the official conspiracy theory. And uh, as I mentioned in my opening, we now have the backing of hard scientific proof to validate our claims that we have been saying all along that the World Trade Center and Building 7 were brought down through the use of pre-planted explosives.